Hey everybody, welcome to Away Games. My name's Kevin McCaffrey. I figured I'd start it off because I was just thinking about how uh, I maybe should feel grateful that I think I am currently less emotionally affected by this Cubs team than Adam Mamawala is, who is on the other side here. Adam, how are you? Uh, how are you feeling after last night's developments? Yeah, I mean, not good. Um, mm -hmm. I guess we've talked about this a lot, like post 2016, wondering like, am I going to care as much? Is it going to yeah. hurt as much? Are the highs going to be as high? Are the lows going to be as low? Um, I tell you what, that that that's a pretty low low. And uh, when I think when I think of things that have happened post twenty sixteen, like the feeling I had after twenty eighteen, losing yeah. uh, game one sixty three in, in the wild card game, and twenty nineteen when they collapsed, twenty twenty, I almost don't even register because it was such a weird season that like. I guess if the Cubs had made a run, great. Yeah, um, they won the division and then they lost to the yeah. dog shit Marlins who are whining That's again. True. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about um, having to play and a then, doubleheader. Yeah, uh, it goes without saying that the, the trade deadline 2021 was about as painful as it gets for mm -hmm. emotional reasons. But um, yeah, thinking about a regular season loss, mm -hmm. this one is, uh, it's hard to think of other than the the Brant Brown game and and a handful of others that I could certainly come up with, including the Victor Diaz game. I was going to say, I attended in two thousand four. Yeah, like what a list. Yeah, it's 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 up there. What now? Why do you feel like you're less emotionally affected? I've I've was talking to Ken Schultz about this as well. Is it just like general disdain for the the way things have gone? It is. Uh, I get, you know, and it, that's something we could probably do a whole episode on, and maybe we will in a couple of weeks or something. But I, when you say like worrying after twenty sixteen, are you going to feel the highs and as much and the lows as much? I was also worried about that and. And then uh, in 2017, with the series against Washington and then losing to the Dodgers, I was happy to realize that, oh, man, it still was it, it still hit me, you know, about as hard as as anything that's not like right. things in your actual family can hit you, you know. Yeah. Um, and by the same token, you mentioned that 2018, I you know, 2018 is the that's when I was uh, I believe that's what when I went to the last game against the Brewers, the the yeah. one game playoff, right, that the Cubs lost. And then I went with my mom to the longest game at Wrigley ever when they lost to the Rockies. So Ugh. those were brutal too. And I think for me, emotionally, I, I still watch the Cubs. I still care about them a bunch. I'm talking about them in this moment. But I think uh, the way 2021 was handled and then the way uh, I, I, and then I think like I was sort of hanging on to a little bit of something trying to think of this team in a way that's not just like a hedge fund and people completely flipping everything. And, <laughs> and like yeah. when Wilson Contreras weirdly left, I think was sort of a dangling bit of heartstring for me that he was not my, I, like, I love, I love Wilson Contreras, but he was not my number one favorite Cubs shout out Sarah Sanchez. He, but he was sort of, I think my last straw in a way emotionally and that, uh, and I just haven't felt as connected since then. So, I mean, yeah. and that's not the best way for me to begin talking about a podcast about the Cubs that people are listening to. <laughs> I still, I still care. I still care about the Cubs very much. They're still my favorite sports team uh, of all time and all that, but I am not as connected in this moment. And I don't know when I will be again. I assume I will yeah. be again, but I'm not, I'm rooting for them very much. But I know you're feeling it more, and so I'm feeling for you as a friend. Like I, I was annoyed yeah. watching it, and when you mentioned the regular season thing, it it uh, Jake Arrieta blowing the six run lead that led to the sell off. Because if he holds on to that, the sell off maybe doesn't happen that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That game that's against the, the one, Brewers. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, there, look, there have been a lot that we every any given season, even in a year that the Cubs are good, there are going to be games that that hurt, but. I think it's really just um, it's just the way that it happened and the person that it it happened to that, that is sucks. the most discouraging part. And I think um, I, for whatever reason, have been able to compartmentalize and look at the people who are there now, mm -hmm. not as some representation of who's not there, but just like a, a natural progression of like, well, the people that I loved and wanted to say aren't there. Naturally, they have to fill a roster, so I'm not going to blame Jan Gomes or Cody Bellinger or Dancy Swanson for existing. Like, yeah, and I don't either. They're not I, the reason that these yeah. guys are gone. 
No, and I, I don't I don't hold it against anyone who is on the Cubs right now. I, I, I root for, I, I think, as I'm going through the roster here, I think I root for every one of these guys individually that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, yeah. But I, it does, to me, I, I, I feel like I'm dating in a good relationship as opposed to being in love right now. You That's know, where, where it's, I, I, and there are guys who I super duper root for on this team who would have fit in perfectly well with the way I love the, the, the old, yeah, Cubs. Christopher Morrell, I love Ian Happ, still big fan of Nico's turned into such a fun guy. 43 stolen bases now. Who saw that coming? That's yeah. crazy. Cody Bellinger is uh, is such a good, uh, you know, hopefully more than a one year fit. But uh, Steele and Alzali, I, I huge. Alzali might be my second favorite closer, uh, arguably right, right at the top that the Cubs have ever had. So there are still those guys for me, but yeah. I do think you as a fan have been have been maybe healthier about that. Hey, it is funny that I'm saying healthier, but it leads to a feeling of unhealth in these moments, yeah, I, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it's just like, so we're obviously recording this after the um, the debacle of a, of a Tuesday night game against right. the Braves in which the Cubs led 6 nothing in the sixth inning with Justin Seal on the mound and yeah. managed to find a way to uh, grab defeat from the jaws of mm-hmm. victory, as they say. And my point is that, like, I did not, I don't know if you watched the whole game, but even when the Cubs went up 6 nothing, mm-hmm. there was never a point where I felt con- completely confident, right? Like, 6 yeah. nothing, Steel on the mound, he, he's been dealing, he looks really good. I absolutely thought the Cubs were going to win that game. But I was also very conscious of the fact that we are playing against the best team in baseball, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say certainly the best offense in baseball and that no no By amount far. of cushion is enough because you could see in that in that sixth inning how quickly it goes from a, a laugher to like, oh, yeah, the tying run is in the on deck circle. So mm-hmm. that I figured that the Cubs wouldn't just win that game six nothing. But let's say they just gave up a ton of runs and they lost 10 to six, or let's say Drew Smiley gives up a gapper and they lose seven to six, or let's say, say it makes that catch. And then Merriweather blows the save. Would it suck? Would it be excruciating? Of course, but to lose in a way where you feel like this is now going to be like one of those things, like one of those cub things that people talk about possibly forever. And like an important distinction to make is that, no one in their right mind thinks that this team can or should win a world series, but I can guarantee you that if the Cubs miss the playoffs, we're not going to talk about the blown game in Houston. We're not going to talk about the 13 inning Arizona game. Like diehards will remember it, Mm -hmm. but say a Suzuki dropping that ball is going to be the thing that people remember from this year. And it's going to overshadow Talkman robbing a home run is going to overshadow Morrell hitting that walk off. It, it's going to overshadow all those things. And that will be the lasting image that we have of this season, because at the end of the day, yeah, no one expects them to go all the way, but you'll never know unless you get there. And I, I tweeted this last night, but as a, as a fan in, in 2003, I remember very distinctly understanding after game six and after the, Bartman play and the Alex S. Gonzalez booted double play ball. Like knowing the Cubs history, if the Cubs win game seven and they go to the world series. Yeah. People will remember this. It'll be like a notable thing, but it'll go away at some point. Mm -hmm. If they lose this game, this will be part of Cubs history forever. And it, and it is one of those things. And like, even for people like us who didn't grow up with some of the other heartbreak, like, Every Cubs fan knows about the fucking black cat and they know about Leon sure. Durham and they yeah. know about all the other things that get added to the list that will fucking once Clark Cubs, even. Yeah. Right. And you yeah. thought once the Cubs won a world series that that narrative would go away, but it does feel a little like it really was a, an almost carbon copy of the Brant Brown situation. The only difference being that in that case, the, the Brewers just like walked it off right then. In this case, the Cubs had an extra inning to see if sure, they could but, get but, something together. But the scenario is like kind of identical. But even as they had that extra inning and there were two poetic chances for it to to turn oh. around there, right? Because we had Seiya Suzuki coming back up to the plate. We had, uh, you know, Dan- Dansby Swanson after that. It sort of felt like if we are being honest with how with ourselves with how we felt in 2000 and 2003 it sort of felt like how we felt going into game seven where right. it, it, you know it, this was just into the, the the top of the ninth but going into game seven i remember telling myself 
I think the Cubs are better than the Marlins. Kerry Woods going. They should have a very good chance to win. It's at home. But I was saying that I was talking to myself in a way of that course. like I didn't believe it in my heart. And I think well, that's how it was yeah. last night, too. And even I feel like I'm doing that right now, convincing right. myself that this team can still make the playoffs. And there's and there's even more time left. There's there are five games left as we speak. They play Atlanta tonight and then Atlanta again tomorrow. Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee to uh end to end the season. And if you say that three times, Craig Council shows up in a mirror behind you and complains about rain. Uh <laughs> so you can try it, try it or don't try it at home. But there are five games left you five games when they are sitting here in i i suppose we're, the 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 mets and marlins are just about to start game one of the uh of the double header here so as we're as we're speaking to you now the the cubs are basically in a virtual tie with the marlins right they are a half game up and the marlins have two games to play today so after today the they will they will have uh played the same number of games but the marlins have the tiebreaker so yeah, there are five games left, and if the Marlins win all their games and the Cubs win all theirs, the Marlins go to the playoffs and the Cubs don't, you know, if Arizona doesn't collapse. Because Arizona is only one game ahead of the Cubs, functionally, too, because of the tiebreaker. I know it's uh, uh, Audio math is not the best, I understand, but that's that's where we are right now. And right. it is it's interesting because I so many, I think we mentioned this last week, but so many people online who were, like, cocky about the Cubs and this team, yeah. Uh, a couple of months ago, we're saying like seasons over four days ago, you know, and I understand. Yeah, the it's weird. You know, it was weird. And like, it's not. There are five games to go, but I totally understand your feeling. And me talking about Cubs teams of the past, the pre championship core years. This yeah. is this is how we felt all the time was that something fucked up is going to happen that doesn't make right. sense and it's going to come to hurt us. And no, but it, it feels it does at a certain point feel like that self-fulfilling prophecy thing where I've talked about it in, in relation to 2008, how when the Cubs had that great season and then played the Dodgers in the first round, there was just that like kind of weird nervous energy yes. at Wrigley where people are just like expecting something to go wrong. And then James Loney hits a grand slam and the wheels come off. And it, th that that's happened a lot of times. It's the classic Matrix thing where she's like, well, if I hadn't said anything, would you have knocked over the vase? Like mm -hmm. when people put that out into the universe, I do feel like um, I do feel like it doesn't help. But again, my... <sighs> I am I'm I'm slightly comforted in seeing that the vast majority of Cubs media people, Cubs fans, the Cubs themselves obviously are not throwing say under the bus. Like it is unequivocally a play that has to be made. And it's sure. especially bad because he calls off Bellinger. Like as someone who plays recreational softball, <laughs> you do not call someone off unless you are a million percent sure that you have the ball. Mm -hmm. you, ju you just don't do it. Like, yeah. maybe he lost in the lights. Maybe he lost focus for a second. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't even know. It's a play that has to be made. However, if the Cubs are not in a position where one miscue can lead to disaster, if the Cubs are still up 6 nothing and, a six and run ball lead. gets past him, I'm not going to say who cares, but, mm -hmm. like, the the magnitude of it is not what it was. And And I guess you don't get to choose... You don't get to choose how you lose or or how things go. It's, mm -hmm. it's using the relationship analogy. It's like, well, I'm you know I'm in a great relationship, but like if things end, I just like I don't want them to end badly. Like I just want them to end in like a nice way. Well, it doesn't always happen that way. That's not how life works. But it's the same feeling that I had in 20, uh, 2016, which was like, if the Cubs had lost the World Series, right? If they had lost Game Five at Wrigley, or if they mm -hmm. lost Game Six back in Cleveland, or if in Game Seven they just got outplayed and they lost. It would have been horrible, but we all would have been able to move on. If the Cubs had lost the way they almost lost game seven, yeah. I don't think any of us recover from that. Yeah. Th these are the things that just make it so painful where where you've been watching a team your whole life inflicting pain and you're like, they, they couldn't possibly come up with another way to make this hurt differently or, well, or more. And, and, and they, they didn't figure it out. This is hack. They they're playing right. reruns now because this is this it's is true, exactly yeah. you know a thing that uh, <laughs> that people were calling back to before with Ron Santo, uh, and uh, you know Bram Brown obviously in uh, in 1998 and all that stuff, which they did end up making the playoffs uh, that that year too. So uh, I remember how I remember how hopeless it felt after that happened. You know, I guess I was God, I, I was 16. I guess it was in high school, but yeah, um, yeah and I think 
when I was talking about players who I do feel uh, connected to, uh, like, you know, I don't feel championship core level connected to Saya, but I feel I think Saya seems like a cool guy. I think he's had it's got to be difficult to adjust to a new country, a new league, all those things. And he was on the cusp of bust town earlier this year. And for a month and a half now, maybe a little more than that, I think he has the, the second best OPS in the National League, I want to say, behind Mookie Betts uh, over over the last six weeks. They were shown on a, a, a on the broadcast yesterday. I was watching on my phone on the train. So, uh, you know, even when I'm saying I'm not terribly, I'm not as connected to the Cubs as I used to be. I'm just right. like able to walk around today, I guess. Uh, but I, when you if you could choose a way to lose it, I wouldn't have wanted him to be the guy to have that happen to, you know, it's not just happened to, he was a part of it too, obviously. Uh, But it just is like, man, that's the guy who without him, the cub without him the past month and a half, the Cubs are like, they're done. They're wrapped up. I mean, right. it's that's there's no way the way this offense has, has uh, cratered in some with in some individual places, he has just carried this team. So, uh, it really sucked to watch that happen with him specifically. Yeah. This episode brought to you by Bustown.net. Make sure to use your incognito windows. <laughs> Please do. Bustown. Yeah, Bustown.gov. I need some North Shore Green adult center. diapers for that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the, the irony of the Saya situation is that part of the, the defense getting jostled around involved Pete Crow Armstrong coming into the game in the fourth inning as a Mi- pitch runner for Mike Talkman. Yeah. Then being pinch hit for by Patrick Wisdom, who stayed in the game at first base, which I hated, Mm -hmm. which then led Bellinger to go back into center field, where he is very good. Now, people saying, oh, well, if PCA were in the game, he might have called off Saya. Um, Yeah, maybe, but, like, it's it's definitely Saya's ball, regardless of who's in center field. Well, yeah, and Cody's... And Co- yeah. Cody's an experienced center fielder. The guy's what, you know, right. this is a gold glover out there. So, and he's a more veteran guy. So I think if anyone was more, I don't think we can say PCA was more likely to call him off. I think what I can say is that using PCA for the middle innings of a game is some of the most bizarrely weird is managing bizarre, yeah. I can see. And pin, pinch running him in that situation. Like Togman isn't fast, fast really, but he's a good base runner. It's just, it was, yeah, it was odd. Bizarre managing. I hate it. And David it also Ross is managing yesterday. it also implies that David Ross in that moment thinks, well, we're up six nothing, so like we're good, right? In terms of scoring, this is a time to put in our our best defense. But I I, I really feel like if you the the only value that PCA really has at this point is defensively and yes. presumably to steal bases. He hasn't been a particularly good base runner. He's been like overzealous and and doing some silly thing overall it's, negative it's, yeah yeah it's definitely a uh, just do less sort of thing like pca seems to be pressing and obviously i'm sure he wants to fit in and get playing time and, and all of that but um all that to say if let's say smiley gets a earlier in the inning gets a double play ball and wisdom doesn't make the play at first mm-hmm. right or wisdom throws into the outfield at first everybody is going to rightfully be all over ross for saying why on earth in a game like this this mm-hmm. close are you having Patrick Wisdom at first base rather than Cody Bellinger? The fact that it was Saya, who is someone who I don't think anyone thinks he's like the best right fielder in baseball, but much he's better a this year. Yeah, he's a he's been good. Um, mm-hmm. That also is a is a routine play. Like, yeah, it's just it's it's really it's tough to swallow, and, and, and you just hope that it doesn't affect him like these next five games and potentially into. <laughs> The rest of his Cubs career of this is something that like lingers with him. Yeah, he's very needed over these last five games. You know, this is he has been the biggest bat by some margin in this lineup. And yeah, I just it, when we talk about uh, you bring in PCA because okay, we're going defensive, we're we're winning six nothing, and then you take out PCA when they took him out, Cubs were still winning. They were winning until yeah. they weren't at the end. So take it. It just is. Doing too much, bizarrely non-committal managing. It reminded me a little of Joe Madden Game Seven, you know, of the just out thinking yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, like, and also to have Miles Mastroboni bunt after when three he's hits for three. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I will never understand that. It sucked. It, it, I and I, I've been someone who I think I, I don't get the full like fire Ross brigade that's been going since like yeah. mid season. Really, I, I you know, but I think yesterday was an F from what I, I of a management job and you really can't have those at this point like going yeah. out of your way to make it worse 
Yeah, and bullpen wise, like I'm not even going to get on Ross for that because he doesn't. He just doesn't have anyone. There's no one there. Yeah. No, I mean, who you have? Like you were saying, Jose Quas pitches every day now, and it's like, all right, that doesn't sound ideal. (laughs) He was kind of like, you know, a throw in. Got him for Velasquez, uh, change of scenery two ways with with those guys at the the middle of the year. But yeah, that's sort of why I'm less overall down on Ross. Is that when I look at the problems, I'm like, well, what do you want him to do? I'm I'm looking at the roster, and with the bullpen now, I think that's more excusable. Now it's also like I know Justin Steele seems like he has been. I don't want to say running out of gas, but he's clearly not his Cy Young self, you know, that he was until uh, three games ago. He's way he's over his career high and innings and appearances and all that. So I I don't want to say, but he he was at 90 pitches when he was taken out. And so he wasn't getting like hammered. It didn't seem like. And with no one in the bullpen, I'm not like big. I think you could argue that he could have he could have stayed in the game. But then if he does and he gets shelled sure. and everyone's like well, why wouldn't you go to the bullpen yeah th- i'm not that's i'm not a huge i'm not hugely arguing with that decision but when your bullpen is as short as it is i guess it's just you know pick your poison here do you are you pushing your starter past where he's comfortable uh at this point in the season fatigue wise or are you going to a bullpen that doesn't really exist you know so right yeah and uh, yeah it's tough because he he really looked very very sharp in those first five innings so to see it come apart that quickly was discouraging, especially because you're starting a stretch of six games in six days to end the season. You right. would love to see Steele go six, seven, eight innings and give the mm-hmm. bullpen a much needed rest because despite the the off day Monday, like these guys are are completely overtaxed and overused at this point. We, the, I, I, it seems pretty clear that Alzali is not going to be back until mm-hmm. if the Cubs make the playoffs. Um, I think the same for Fulmer, certainly, and, and Boxberger is in the same boat. So, like, you just don't – you don't yeah. have the the arms at this point. But I think um, to kind of backtrack a little bit, because obviously we've spent a lot of time talking about just this game, um, the Cubs – last time we talked, the Cubs had, I think, split the first two against the uh, the Pirates mm-hmm. and then – or no, I'm sorry. They had just beaten the Pirates that first game when Canario hit the Grand Slam. I was about to go to the game. They lost that one. That was one with the half Grand Slam. But then mm-hmm. Steele got – banged around gave up six consecutive singles in that game it's the um, most I will annoying say the, shit yeah. yeah incredibly annoying i will say the vibes at wrigley were great um okay. and the half grand slam moment was was very cool so i at least got that to root for but they lose the next two to pittsburgh which sucks and david ross makes some kind of silly comments about basically disrespecting pittsburgh which was not <laughs> yeah well he necessary. was saying like this is not uh that, that's not a good team over there i think he said and uh, and they're not you know we're fighting for the they're not at our level i don't know man you're fighting for the sixth <laughs> playoff spot in a, right. in a in a league with 15 teams I, yeah. I agree they're not a good team you're not good enough to talk like that <laughs> Yeah, it's even like because I'll use the term pennant race, and then when I like really think about it, I'm like, but is it though? Like, it's not a pennant. I, I don't know. It's yeah. a sticker. I don't know what it it's is. A sticker, that they're yeah. going for. It's a yeah. pin. Yeah. Um. But anyway, so they they lose two of three to Pittsburgh, which is brutal, especially after a terrible road trip. But then they come out and they sweep Colorado, which is what they needed to do. Like going into that six game homestand, you're saying you gotta win four out of six, ideally five or six out of the six, but like. They absolutely had to win more than they lost in that stretch. And they won some very close games over the weekend against Colorado. None of those really were gimmies. I guess Friday was kind of an easy game, but then Saturday and, and Sunday both had a lot of a lot of stress and high leverage situations yeah. and a lot of Merriweather like working himself in and out of trouble. And they they got it done. Um and so now we're we've got five games left. Mm-hmm. And my feeling is today is gonna be really big. If the Marlins sweep that doubleheader and if the Cubs lose tonight and they're a game behind, which is effectively two games behind, um, or if, you know, the Reds win as well and then they're right there with the Cubs, like now you're really creating a difficult situation where you're going to have to make up two games in the final four. And that's not to say that that can't happen, but despite how awful last night was and despite how much we all feel like the sky is falling, let's say the Cubs win tonight and the Marlins split the two. Right mm-hmm. of the of the doubleheader, you're still basically where you need to be, right? Yeah, you, you have now regained control of your own destiny, and that's really all you can ask for at this time of year. Like this, this is a team that we've talked uh, ad nauseum about does not have depth, mm-hmm. um, and that's why they're fighting for their lives right now. So I think there have been a lot of 
stages where in the past few weeks it was like, all right, if this happens, I'm going to start panicking. And in some cases it did happen. But my view on it broadly is like, look, I didn't expect the Cubs to be where they are right now. Was last night horrible for sure. Um, but it's five games left. I'm not going to like throw in the towel until like, what's, what's, yeah, what, what why would the point you? of following them <laughs> yeah. for 157 <laughs> games and then be like, ah, fuck it, they're done? Yeah, people can fan how they want to fan, but it's funny how, how so, some of the most active Twitter kids have just been like, fuck it, it's over. And it's just like, man, there. this has been so many days. This is just, just buckle down for this week. See what happens yeah. this week. It, it's a, you know. And I don't know if this is a week where, since there is so much going on, who who knows? Maybe we'll hop on and like talk again at some point before it's uh before it's all over, you know, to to recap with people. But um, yeah, this is I I where, where I'm at as the Cubs are 82 and 75. That's better than I thought they were going to be this year with five to go. This is a uh, you know every game means something, and that that'll be I, that that's it's it it's exciting at least. Or it yeah. should be. All right. So the situation as as it stands right now, Arizona is playing the White Sox for two more games. Because the other thing that sucks is like, and baseball changes very quickly, but there was a brief moment last night in like maybe the second or third inning for the Cubs where mm-hmm. Cubs were up, I think, four nothing. Diamondbacks were losing three nothing. Reds were losing, and there was this little window where you were like, "Oh, okay, this could actually break." in a really nice way. The Cubs could beat the Braves, which, you know, is mm-hmm. never an easy feat. They could be tied with, or I guess they would have been a game ahead of Arizona, right? Had that happened? Like the reverse happened, basically Arizona won and the Cubs lost. But I think right. going into yesterday, thanks to the Yankees beating them on Monday, the Cubs were tied with the Diamondbacks, but the Diamondbacks had the, uh, right. The it would. Um, yeah. The Cubs would have been ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Point being, Cubs have five games left. Diamondbacks have five games left. Two against the White Sox, who don't even have Luis Robert. So, I mean, it's like barely a team at this it's point. It's not a major league team, yeah. No, they, but they then they play the Astros. With... Yeah. yeah. So, the Astros, obviously, are going to need those games. And then um, the Marlins have three against the Mets. Two today, one tomorrow. And then Pittsburgh, so who knows. But what do you think the Cubs need to do in the final five games? Do you think three and two gets them into the playoffs? I think there's a decent chance three and two does. I, I I wouldn't feel comfortable with three and two, but there there just are enough teams that can fuck up on their own that yeah. uh, that people can people can sink beneath you. It can be a battle to the bottom. None yeah. of these teams are that good. I, like, sorry, I, I I guess if the Cubs win every game from here on out, they will finish eighty seven and and seventy five, and that's good. I would say that yeah. eighty seven is like yeah. good, you know. But for it, it looks like looks like there's going to be an eighty four, eighty five win team sneaking into the playoffs, and that's not. I guess it's good. You won more than you lost, but it's I'm not impressed, you know, right. by by that in terms of uh, the the grand scheme of things. So. I think there's a pretty significant chance three and two does get you in. In terms yeah. of feeling comfortable at all, four and one, I think. And I know right. that's only one game difference. I think if you go less than four and one, you are really crossing your fingers. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think five and oh for sure gets you in. I think four and one gets you in. I think three and two, I would give it like 60, 40 odds. Mm hmm. And then if you're two and three or anything less than that, like you, frankly, you don't deserve to. Make That's it. what I'm saying. If you're two, if you're two and three at this point, and by the way, that would be a two and four close to the to the end. Right. And I know, and the way the schedule shakes out, the teams the Cubs are playing here are so much harder than what the Marlins are dealing with at this point. But the Cubs got to play the Marlins a bunch earlier in the year and sucked at it. So right. you know, you can't complain. You can't complain too much unless you're a Marlins fan. Then you can complain about everything. Yeah. <laughs> then you can complain. Ah, oh, they got we had a doubleheader once. Uh, Major League Baseball. Baseball doesn't care about Miami baseball. Neither does Miami. So shut the fuck up. Uh, it is you lucky, you, you lucky, worthless franchise that's never been the best in your division. Yeah. I was talking about this at Away Game Spot on Twitter earlier. You've never been the best in your division ever. You've bungled your way into two World Series and you're complaining? Shut the fuck up. I'm talking to four people right now, Marlins fans. But uh, I, <laughs> I just contract the team. If they contract the team, what I want to happen, then we've got a great shot from here on out. But if you're the Cubs and you're going two and four over your last over your last six games when you need it, I can't, 
you know, what did we want? That that you're not supposed to make the playoffs then. I yeah, I would agree. Yeah. And oh, and um, the Marlins luck. Just look at who they're playing to finish the season. The Mets who naturally. Mets who aren't playing anymore, and the Pirates who asked David. You know, Ross. though, I I have to say, and I I could be wrong here. I don't think the Mets like the Marlins either. I I think that I I would always yeah. rather a team is playing a team in their division because you feel like those teams are going to play hard. And and we saw that with Pittsburgh, right? Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh took two or three from the Cubs. They ended up beating the Reds in a game that I I, I think I arguably maybe jinxed the Cubs because after the the Reds blew a nine nothing lead, I <laughs> yeah. literally tweeted like I cannot imagine what Cubs Twitter <laughs> would be like if the Cubs did this, and they were close. close. So, yeah, I would say last night was arguably more painful just because of the way they lost. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that it wasn't a nine nothing lead and it was a six nothing lead, I think maybe the Cubs take the cake on that one. But right. um, also, like, not that I don't think there's any baseball script. But if you're Major League Baseball, uh, you, do you really want a Brewers Marlins first round? I mean, what a snooze what a great, it up. I mean, that has that has twelve oh seven start time written all over it. Yeah, if this was the, the playoffs, absolutely. If this was the NBA, there'd be a lot to talk about the officials trying to work a Cubs. Uh, Cubs Brewers matchup in the uh, in the first round. There, it would be know. so fun. And I, I listen. Be. I know it would be brutal, know, but yeah, yeah. I know that if the Cubs make the playoffs, and I know that if they play Milwaukee and they get fucking smashed, I'm going to be disappointed and annoyed. But I really just want this team to get in, uh, like especially because I just don't. Yes, I, I guess it is true that people still talk about Brant Brown all the time later, despite the fact that the Cubs made the playoffs anyway that year. Mm-hmm. So. To some degree, like it's already done. Like, mm-hmm. say a Suzuki. When when people hear that name, when Cubs fans hear that name, this will always be part of what he was as a as a Cub. Even if he has an amazing career, like you're never going to hear Will Smith and not remember the slap a little bit. Like, does it <laughs> sure. define him? Maybe not. But like, sure. it is part of what you think of when you hear about him. Yeah. So I just I really hope that it is diminished. And the other thing that would be really cool is like. If the Cubs get into the playoffs, and if Saya is part of what gets them there in these past five games, it would that would be amazing. And mm-hmm. as as he was batting last night, I think everybody in the world was thinking, "My God, what a what a moment it would be for him to immediately redeem himself and hit a two run homer." I was it would real arguably hard. it would be the most Cub thing for him to have done that, and then Merriweather just blows the save immediately. <laughs> At that point, that that's yeah. when I would come around to the Twitter people being like, "Shut it down. We're done for the year. We get yeah, you know we've done, uh, yeah." But I, I do hope that regardless of whether or not the Cubs make the playoffs, this season has simultaneously been enough of a success that it is a reminder that we need to build on to this team and not like and also a reminder that this team was not constructed to be a super successful team. Right. Which so was this isn't good enough. No, it's not good enough. This is this is a very good outcome for the team you put on paper it's almost as good as it could possibly be to this point and it still has room to be as good as i mean if they if they went out and go win 87 games that's you cannot convince me there was another win left in this in this roster uh you know already a winning season from this yeah as you say and hopefully it's a stepping stone going into next year and realizing yeah you have to this this can't be enough you have to build upon it and building upon this would also include you got to replace Cody Bellinger and then go beyond that. So it's going to be right. a, you know, kind of a, a tall order there too, but a, a, you know, a tall order that the Chicago effing Cubs should have no problem doing if they give a shit. So, you I know, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that that will be the case. I do. I do have to say, I, I have no doubt that if the Cubs miss the play, especially if they miss it by like one game, we're all going to be thinking about last night a lot and it'll hurt. But I do think that the difference is that, 2004 for sure and also 2018 and 2019 i really believe that those cubs teams could win the world series Mm -hmm. i believed in my heart that they were good enough to win the world series yeah uh i do not believe that this year and that doesn't mean that they can't like it's baseball so anything Mm -hmm. is possible and it would be amazing and improbable if if they did but i do feel like it makes it a little easier when i start to mentally prepare myself for what it will be like if they miss the playoffs to know that like I, I, in my heart of hearts, I truly believe that the ceiling for this team would be the LCS and that would be a stretch. It'd be, and it'd be great. And like it, it, taking the thing where you, if especially if they could get to the playoffs and oust the Brewers, 
what what beauty that would be in the turnaround to that awful ending to 2018 a sort of yes. karmic return that's yeah. enough for me this year that that is enough for me and it's it's how we felt in uh how i felt in 2017 actually when they beat the nationals and then i just it just felt like i think we've gotten all we can out of these guys 2015 too run and beating 2015 the cardinals. beating the yeah. cardinals and getting to the because i wasn't that sad then because i felt more was coming and i felt like yeah. uh, of course i want him to beat the mets and win the world series but i was i in my in my heart of hearts i didn't feel like it was time yet you know yeah. a back to the future too was just one year off and i felt that at the time that's too true. so you know i think that is a that's a good way to put it like i i, I think what I the realistic thing that I want for this team settle your playoff spot go in there and kick the shit out of the Brewers and oh, I pop and I will pop champagne for the the 2023 Cubs all day for we'll that Papa Miller that, high life Papa Miller yeah I got I got one in my fridge right now I could do it uh so yeah I think the the other thing uh not to go all Gordon Bombay on you but wow um you know, Triple you remember the, me, uh, Daddy. yeah, if it, if it had been one inch to the left, it would have it would have gone in. It's like, yeah, but if it had been one inch to the right, like it would have missed completely. What I mean by that is when people like to play this game of like, oh, my God, think of the games that the Cubs like blew this year or, you know, the game last night or the game in Houston where they were up 6-1 or uh, the game in Arizona where they were one strike away. It's like all of that is true. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're playing that game, you can't just act like there weren't a bunch of games the Cubs won that they had no business winning. They shouldn't have yeah. come back against the Mariners early in the season. That game against the White Sox where Morrell hits the grand slam, Michael Fulmer worked out of a bases loaded, nobody out yeah. situation where the Cubs almost were down, you know, nine to three or whatever. Struck nine them all out, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So it I, I feel that, of course, the Cubs have lost a lot of close games. They've lost a lot of heartbreaking games this year, but they've also won some games that they frankly shouldn't have won. So yeah. like, if you're going to play that game in one direction, it's not completely fair to just act like all of the other stuff didn't happen as no, well. No, there's there's people hanging the banner for the run differential that we talked about earlier in the year and stuff. But I, I think not to be such an old meatball and be like, oh, the, the numbers don't tell all the story. But you watch you've been watching this team all year. Yeah, the run differential has been nice. And we know how like how much of that game in like a series against the A's or whatever. Right. But it i don't feel like they've left a lot on the bone like a lot of meat on the bone here and yeah. i think you're exactly right they've lost some of these super stupid close improbable losses and they've won a few that way too and i i feel like that leaves us about even and about on a true read of the roster so you know that's where we are and we're we got five games to go it's one more time through the rotation it's it's tyone starting off tonight i'll tell you i haven't bet on the cubs much this year i put a five dollar or no i put a ten dollar no sweat bet i'll get a free bet if i lose but <laughs> but i i put 10 on it tonight because i just think the this cubs team it they've come back enough and they have to win right now. Yeah. And so I feel like I, you know, and I, I whatever I, <laughs> I think a couple weeks ago, I was like, it'd be a collapse for them to not make the playoffs. And it's true. And they're trying, yeah. but, um, uh, you know, so I'm not trying to jinx them, well, but I, I kind of believe they're going to I, win. I am not a betting man. I, I bet yeah. very rarely, but I put $10 into my FanDuel account to place a $10 bet on the Cubs to make the playoffs. I nice. did it after the Pittsburgh series. I got two to one odds. Oh, great. And, uh, you know, since then they've, I don't know. I a sweep is always good. I don't care who you're playing. Of course. Uh, last night, of course, sucks. But I do have some breaking news. I just saw on, on my uh, iMessage text from my buddy Adam Pete Alonso two run shot. Let's go, Matt. Hey, let's go, Matt. Start. It feels gross saying it, but I mean it right now. Future Cub Pete Alonso. Uh, <laughs> really helping. I mean, out. Pete Alonso, Juan Soto, Shohei Otani. It's going to be a great year next. Get year. them all together. That's what I'm talking about. So cool. Well, uh, we'll we'll get this podcast up for uh, for for people as the uh, Mets game is starting. If you're on that MLB package, check go go cheer on your New York baseball Mets uh, yeah. against. Except the... for us, because we're blacked out, and also I don't think YouTube TV has. <laughs> SNY. So there's no. no way for me to watch. Great, good times. <laughs> I'm an old man with team in my own city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. There you go. Yeah. So I got, I can get after it. But uh, but yeah. And uh, congrats to the Tennessee Smokies for winning the Double A title. Hey, Very fun. Very fun to see that. I believe it was Alex. <laughs> 
No, it wasn't Alex Cohen on the call. I think he he does uh, Iowa. Whoever it was, <laughs> great, great, great call. It was fun to watch those guys celebrate. Uh, so that's the last note I had. Uh, congrats to the AA champs, Southern Southern League champs. Uh, Very cool. Let's let's do it uh, two two leagues up, huh? Yeah. How about that? Add away games pod. Uh, go root on those Cubs and Mets and whoever else, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a decent chance we could jump back on in a couple it's, of days. Yeah, it's but, possible. We'll we'll play it. We'll play it by yeah. ear. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody. Go Cubs. <laughs>